Lesson one. Price is an extremely effective driver of profit and growth. Growing through price is typically better than growing through volume alone. If you can combine price and volume growth, the effects will be very strong on revenue and extreme on profit. Now you were laughing when I said, can you grow both? Let me show you a couple of cases. Why and how? Of course, you cannot just increase price and hope that the volume is going up. Normally, if you increase price, the volume is going down. So it's more complicated than just moving up and down on the price scale. What is the profit potential in a market? And that is a triangle. Why triangle? I have here the price and the sales volume. And then you have what you call the demand curve in a typical market. Higher price means you sell less volume. Lower price, you sell more volume. And the profit potential is the dark area below that curve above the variable unit cost. Oh, well, that's a profit in the market. It is there. But can you get it? Can you harvest it? That's a different issue. And if you only have one price, what we call the uniform price, you're only cutting a rectangle out of the triangle. Does everybody follow me? Who doesn't follow me? Everybody understands it's simple. You have one price and you sell a certain volume, so you cannot harvest the triangle, obviously, because you are creating a rectangle. It took me 20 years when I was a professor in my former life to express that in that simple way that the challenges from rectangle to triangle. Let me show you an application. This is the curve for a European cinema chain. You see the number of visits per week on the vertical axis and the price on the horizontal axis. The profit potential is the triangle below the stepwise curve. This cinema chain, until that time, had one uniform price of 550 euros. So they cut out a rectangle of some, out of the much bigger triangle. Question is, can you get more out of this market? Can you grow? Can you grow profit and volume? Price, volume, and profit. The willingness to pay of the visitors is displayed here. We have three groups, A, B, and C. And they are willing to pay more for the first visit, the best film, which is shown that month, than for the second and third. So the willingness to pay for a cinema visit differs according to customer groups and according to the number of visits per month. So what would you do in this case if they are willing to pay more, if the value of the first film is higher than of the second film? You need a different price, a higher price for the first visit than for the second and third visit. And this is a price scheme we introduced. The area, the dark area, is not yet the full triangle, but much bigger than the rectangle we have seen. How much is it bigger? Price, on the average, is 11.5% higher. We get a volume plus, number of visitors, of 22.1%. 
and profit increases by 37%. So we have achieved here the impossible. We increased the average price, we increased the volume, the number of visitors, and of course, a dramatic impact on profit. So you can both increase price and profit, but not just by raising price, but by introducing different pricing systems. Here, so-called nonlinear system. It's uh, based on a card. People show their card, and according to whether it's the first, second, third visit, they pay a different price. Well, let's look at this example, Lexus. The luxury brand of Toyota, which was introduced in 1990, and in the following seven years, they increased the price year after year. Now, what happened to volume? Volume went dramatically up from 16,000 cars in the first year to 83,000 in the seventh year. Why? Because people learned that this car was of very high quality and more people were willing to buy the Lexus at a higher price. Revenue went up from 570 million to 4.3 billion dollars. Both an increase in price by 47 percent, dramatic, and an increase in volume by 412 percent. I don't know what the effect on the profit was because Toyota doesn't report that specific uh, profit for the segment, but uh, that was even much bigger. A totally different strategy applied by Apple for the iPhone. Toyota applied a so-called penetration strategy where they started low and increased the price over these seven years. Apple started high and <coughs> cut the price year after year. But they introduced more powerful iPhones and kept the average price extremely high at over $600 compared to the price of uh, the average phone, which is about $200. So what happened to growth? You know how Apple exploded with the iPhone. And what ultimately counts is, of course, margin, not the price as such. And of course, the costs went down. They kept the average selling price high at 640. The average selling price of the competition is 287. Can you imagine that? A price difference of $350. The manufacturing costs of Apple are estimated for different models to be in between 118 and 245. The profit margin is 26%. And with a market share of global market share of only between 15 and 20%, Apple gets 90% of the profit. So they are charging an outrageously high price relative to the cost. Still, they are getting huge volume increases and harvest 90% of total smartphone profits in the world. Unbelievable. Behind that is, of course, value, ease of use, brand, marketing, but also accompanied by the courage to charge these high prices. Mm -hmm.